well it had all been a little bit easy up to now hadn't it but there we have it the first real setback of the Arna slot era as Liverpool suffer a 1-0 defeat to Nottingham Forest here at Anfield today and I have to say really they kind of deserved to lose this game or the very least didn't deserve to win it just didn't think they played well across the game really I thought it was a just a, a sluggish and, and a poor performance really and I remarked to my colleague Ian Doyle who was sat next to me that around the 70 minute mark that you could feel the tension in the ground you know the, the, the feeling that Liverpool weren't going to get over the line in this one because they just weren't playing well throughout the game they weren't very convincing and you always know that when you're in a situation like that it only takes you know a counter or a set piece to to fall behind and then all of a sudden you, you, you're chasing the game and that is exactly what happened I mean two minutes after that Callum Hudson Odoi scores and that wins the game for Nottingham Forest and the truth is you know, Liverpool didn't really even look like getting back in it they had a lot of the ball after that goal but really they weren't massively threatening with it and just didn't you know, just couldn't play the football that we've seen so far in Arna Slot's reign um, and in the end go down you know Forest defended it comfortably and, and come away with the first win here at Anfield since 1969 so a, a huge upset really um, but I do think you know it's often said isn't it that you learn a lot in defeats or possibly more than when you're winning games actually and I do think you know there's some moments in this and performances that, that helped us to learn a lot about Arna Slot and his team and I think that the first one really is that you know, he's got a little bit of a job on his hands in terms of coming up against a tactic like this this is the first real test for him is how he solves this problem it's not just about picking his players up from the, the disappointment of defeat but tactically, does he have the, the answers to the questions that were posed in this game? Because I thought tactically Forrest approached this one perfectly, really. The, the setup was, you know, made sure it was really clogged the game up. It was a, like a 4 3 2 1, so three midfielders in front of the back four, making it really difficult. Could even be five midfielders at times because. He had kind of Gibbs White and Anderson tucking in to make it really narrow and, and basically just closing off the centre of the pitch. Liverpool, you know, in, in so many of the games so far, those first three, they've found ways to pass through uh, the opposition formation and, and, and done it so impressively. And, and basically, it's all about passing through that uh, formation and finding yourself close to the goal. And then that's when your quality tells. But they found it very, very difficult against Forrest, as I say, clogging up that centre of the pitch. It was so, so difficult to get to, through the centre. And at times, he had to basically go wide but really really struggled to create anything from there I mean the statistics bear it out as well 14 shots Liverpool took only five shots on target one big chance but only generating 0.87 expected goals so that just shows you in attack they really weren't causing uh, any real problems for Forrest and, uh, and as I say part of that problem was that they couldn't pass the ball through the middle so they couldn't get into central areas but also then when they went wide instead and tried to attack uh, Forrest through that outlet he really, really struggled in doing that because I thought uh, Moreno and Aina on either side, the fullbacks for Forest, were absolutely fantastic. I thought they locked down their sides, uh, they, they, they won their individual battles with Liverpool's wingers, and then uh, and then looked dangerous on the break as well themselves. So it gave Forest a little bit of an outlet. So I thought you know sometimes you got to credit the opposition for their performance, and I thought both fullbacks really for me were the the man of the match. You could probably share it between them, but I think that was indicative of Liverpool's problems is that they couldn't go through the centre because there were so many bodies there. But whenever they did go wide, they couldn't create any threat because both those fullbacks were having uh, fantastic games. And the, the huge question for Slot is now is that, you know, sides will be watching this, other Premier League teams will have seen what has happened here and know that, okay, if you clog up the centre of the pitch, you're asking a lot of your fullbacks to have good games, they need to play as well as Aina and, and Moreno did here. But if they do do that and you can clog up the centre of the pitch in that way, then you really, really can throw a spanner in the works of slot for Liverpool. And I'm absolutely fascinated, really, to see does he have the answers for this? Because he's had the, every answer so far to every question that's been thrown at him in the three games that Liverpool have played. But obviously this fourth game has shown that he's going to have to find a new tactic against these. You know, because it's not just the tactic as well. It's the fact that you know, you, when you're in the Premier League, these players that you're up against, are, you know, the peak athleticism that they've got uh, you know, is the most physical league in the world isn't it so they can cover every blade of grass the gaps are so small when you try and play through so Liverpool have either got to be quicker or just be better or there's got to be some sort of uh, tactic they come up with to, make, to work the way through a formation like that because as I say I doubt that's the last time they're going to face this tactic so real test for slot now how he responds to that one um, and also talking about the, the wingers there and, uh, or rather Forest fullback and the, the, the game they had against Liverpool's wingers that leads me nicely actually onto Mo Salah and his performance today and I think it's worth noting I want to start this by saying look you don't want to jump on anyone's performances I thought Liverpool certainly in attack were poor across the pitch I don't think anyone came out of this with any real credit but I think Salah 
it's particularly interesting to focus on just because there's so much talk about his contract at the moment and I think if you came into this game and spoke to anyone outside Anfield prior to this game and would have asked about Mo Salah and his contract situation they probably would have said look give him three years of 350 grand a week uh, get that deal done you give him everything that he wants it, it has to you know you can't let him leave but I think I think today kind of showed why Liverpool might have a little bit of reluctance to just collapse and give in to his demands on that front and why there might need to be a little bit of negotiation around what that contract looks like because to be honest I thought he was Liverpool's poorest attacker today again the statistics really show that I mean he has three shots but doesn't really create any threat wins one out of seven ground duels completes one out of five dribbles uh, and only a 70% passing accuracy he was consistently giving the ball away today uh, just looked a, a shadow of himself and again that can happen to any player he can have a poor game but Liverpool have got to factor in if he is going to be consistently your highest paid player of all time and you're going to extend that contract a little bit further what are you going to get out of it are you going to see more performances like this or more frequently as he ages and it's going to be a bit patchy from time to time that is something Liverpool really have to think about and really have to guard themselves against so I, I think today was really a performance that although I don't expect this to continue he's still an absolute world-class player and I'm, I'm sure he'll bounce back immediately it just shows you why it's a difficult decision to make and not as much of a, a slam dunk as is maybe made out to just give him the contract and get it done you know Liverpool have got to think not just about what he is now but what he's going to be over the next three years and whether that means that they only want to give him two years or only one year or you know maybe the wages are slightly less it's it, that's a negotiation that has to happen and I think today and his performance there really underline why it is a really difficult situation for Richard Hughes and Michael Edwards uh, to, to, yeah, well, to, to come to really a decision on that one. So, um, yeah, a, a tricky one, but I'm sure, as I say, he will bounce back pretty quickly. And if you're looking for positives from this game, and I do think there were some, I want to talk about the defending from Liverpool. Obviously, they conceded for the first time uh, this season today. Just one goal conceded in four games. But I think you really do have to highlight that the defending, in the, for the most part, in this game was very, very good. I think Hudson's, Hudson Odoi's goal, again, you have to highlight the opposition at times. It's a brilliant finish, arrowed into the bottom corner. Uh, he cuts in in a way that it's very, very difficult to stop at times, particularly when you're trying to open up a little bit more and you do leave yourself susceptible to the counter at times. So it was just a very good goal. But as I say, I thought the defending in general was very very good um, I mean uh, Forrest end the game with five shots three of those on target and only 0.6 xg uh, generated and I think one of those shots on target was actually an offside situation that once the flag went up the, the referee allowed play on so I, I think that might actually be down to, to two shots on target and as I said I thought the defending was good I thought you, you have to say that Canate was very very good bullied Chris Wood whenever he was near him uh, dealt with the breaks in behind very very well thought Van Dijk similarly he was really good up against Chris Wood I thought Gravenberg in defensive midfield again did his job of keeping the ball and, and breaking up play you know Forrest didn't create very much they just scored a very good goal at the end and if Liverpool had performed better in attack they would have you know they would have overcome that obviously the idea is always to keep clean sheets but you have to ex acknowledge that sometimes the opposition's quality is going to tell and that really is what happened here uh, but as I say, I thought structurally it looked defensively quite sound and, uh, and the p individual performances at the back were very good. It's just the attack was so, so poor today that I think for me that is the reason that Liverpool didn't win this game or in fact went on to lose it. Now, I'm going to just kind of leave it there with, or, or, or maybe leave it with a, another little upside to, in, in, and it's the fact that you know, Liverpool do have a chance to quickly get this one out of the system. Obviously, it's Milan coming up in midweek, so all focus on that. And I think if they can get a win there in the Champions League, start that campaign off in the right way, put this one quickly behind them, uh, then obviously that will do a lot for confidence and it can bounce back into the Premier League and you know maybe if they get a win in the next Premier League game you can think that this is maybe just one of those early season blips they happen to every team don't they um, so that will be the hope that they, they can go there and I think it's also worth noting that I don't think the international break helped Liverpool the fact that so many players in, in attack were so poor today they all looked like they lacked a little bit of rhythm like they'd been apart for a couple of weeks they hadn't been training and playing together very often um, so, and when you lose that little bit of spark and rhythm it makes it much easier for a side like Forest who are going to come and try and make it difficult for you to be successful in that aim so I do think it's not all doom and gloom I do think you know Liverpool can bounce into that next one and hopefully get the win there and that will bring the confidence back uh, but some problems for, for Arnold Slot to solve so really interested to see how he goes about that now as ever 
please do let me know in the comments what you thought of the performance. Obviously not a great one, but you know, are you a little bit worried about it or do you think that Liverpool it's just a bad day at the office and they can get on a little run again now? Uh, do let me know your thoughts as ever. And if you can like and subscribe as, as always, that's massively helpful. I'm sure there'll be more wins to come. So if you're new to the channel, do subscribe. And uh, you know, it's not always negative. It's not always doom and gloom. There are positives. It's been very positive this season up to now. And I'm sure there'll be more positives to come. Uh, but as ever, uh, the games are coming thick and fast, aren't they? So Milan up next. So I'll see you guys very, very soon.